Hello everyone, it's Atheist T-Girl. Today we're going to talk about three what-the-fuck Bible stories that are in the Bible. When you're raised with the stories in the Bible, you don't really give them much of a second thought. They're there. Some of them are helpful when you're making a sermon. Some are helpful for arguments. But you never really think about them. And then you hear someone outside of your religion make fun of your stories when you tell them. And you don't understand it because you've grown up with them and you don't realize how absurd they found. But they are. Some of them are really weird. So today I'm going to give you three of them from the Bible that I find are very unusual. So gender is just a social construct and believing in God is a crutch. When you mix them together and give them a whirl, what do you got? Atheist T-Girl! English in America is slowly being homogenized thanks to TV and radio, but there are still regional accents. Pak the ka, ope, and y'all are still phrases that can be found in use. But as often as my te English teacher threatened to, she never actually killed me for using the word ain't. But in the Book of Judges, there was a story where having an accent was a life or death matter. Jephthah, 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 however you pronounce his name, appears in the 11th and 12th chapter of Judges. Short history lesson. Most of the Old Testament has to deal with the country of Israel. The book of Judges is a bunch of stories of Israelites repeatedly making God mad. As punishment, he would allow one of the many countries that surrounded Israel to invade and conquer all or parts of it. The people of Israel would say they were sorry and God would raise a hero to then drive out the invaders. The country of Israel was divided into 12 tribes. Jephthah lived in a part of Israel called Gilead and they are attacked and taken over by people called the Ammonites. The people of Gilead ask Jephthah to help and he beats the Ammonites in battle. Afterwards, another group of Israel called the Ephraims asked Jephthah why he didn't ask for help. Sort of like when your friend purposely waits until after you're done moving to ask if you need help. When he calls them out on their bullshit, they invade. Jephthah beats them and the Ephraimites try to retreat. Along the border between the two parts of the country, Jephthah sets up a checkpoint and he asks everyone, anyone trying to pass if they are from Ephraim. If they are, they kill them. Well, the Ephraimites might have been dumb enough to invade, but most of them realized that the best answer was to say, no, I'm not from Ephraimat, Ephraim. So the guards would ask them to pronounce the word Shibboleth. If they pronounce it right, they lived. If they pronounce it Shibboleth with an H at the end, they were killed. Side note, that was my cat. Side note, in grade school, I took a speech therapy class because I couldn't pronounce the th or the sh sound. So I would have been screwed. I probably would have gone up and said Sibylla and been stabbed right through the heart. As a result of having bad accent, 42,000 people were killed. And you thought online grammar Nazis were bad. Number two. Before Israel became a people and a country, it was a man who had been named Jacob who changed his name to Israel. One day, one of his daughters was visiting a town. The prince of that town saw her and then grabbed and raped her. The prince then fell in love with her. Oh, how romantic. His father sent a message to Jacob saying, bad news, my son has raped your daughter. Good news, he now loves her. How much can we pay you to make this all go away? And let my son marry your daughter. Two of Jacob's sons went to the town and said, I, we're sorry, you can't do that. All of our brothers and all our cattle and wolf would love to be part of your country, but our God won't let us because every one of us is circumcised. The king and the prince of the city went to the men of the town. They told him if they all got circumcised, they could then have this rich family join the country and they would all get these women and money and cattle and everything that belonged to this family. You know, JFK is often thought as a 
very charismatic leader who helped this country stay strong during a missile crisis and helped push the country into space. But he would have rolled a one in his charisma that compared to the king who convinced every man in town to slice off parts of their penises. And this is before the time of painkillers. After the two sons of Jacob stopped laughing about how gullible the town was, they went in while all the men were stuck in bed bleeding and unable to move. Then they killed them all. Yes, they waited till the people decided to go ahead and circumcise themselves. Then once the men were all in town bleeding and unable to move because, you know, they cut off parts of their penis, the two sons of Jacob came in and killed them. Talk about having a bad day. After that, the other brothers and sons of Jacob came in and took all the possessions, including the women, and made them their own. I'm sure there was no rape involved with that. When Jacob tried to rebuke his two sons, they argued that this was the right punishment for someone who would rape a woman and then try to pay the father to make it better. And thus it became a law later in the Bible when God gave laws. No, not that if you rape, you and your town dies. Instead, if you rape, you can buy a woman you raped and force her to marry you. So both of these stories were in the Old Testament and any good apologist will say, ah, the Old Testament is not always right. Unless it says something that aligns with their bigotry, then the Old Testament's A-OK. -okay. Jesus is the example to follow. He went from town to town helping people and preaching, showing love to all. As long as you were human, which meant, in Jesus' case, Jewish. In Matthew 15, Jesus was preaching when a woman from another country, Canaan, came to him begging, Jesus, please help my child. Jesus at first ignored her. But being a silly, shrill woman, she continued to beg. Jesus' disciples told him, Oh my father! Can't you just make her shut up already? At which point Jesus told the woman that his miracles were only for the children of Israel and not the dogs from somewhere else. Yes, he called people from other countries dogs. Still the woman persisted and admitted that, okay, she's a dog, but even dogs get crumbs. So he healed her. Modern believers will say this was because Jesus was meant only for Israel until after the Holy Spirit came. And that makes sense wait until you remember in Matthew 8 the same book slightly earlier a non-Jewish military officer asked Jesus to heal the servant and Jesus got right up off his ass to go heal him no questions asked he then gave a speech that his table in heaven would be filled with non-Jews I wonder why he would treat him better than her oh my Jesus was a good old boy Thank you everyone for tuning in. I know it's been a while since I had a full video. I was sick all last week. I'm feeling better. I hope to see some of y'all this weekend at Faithless Forum. I will be there. Come see me if you're there. I won't be one of the featured speakers, but I will be there and I'll be happy to talk to anyone. I'm hoping to see y'all there and I'm hoping to have a lot of fun. Please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and be sure to ding, 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 ring that bell so that you know when I put up new videos. And as I always say, I hope you all have a great day.